one thing that I see in common that uh, some of actually you have not done or you can actually improve further would be first to highlight the changes on the ring transformation. That's the main thing. Because when, you know, from phenol right to the end product, there are a few changes there. The core structure remains the same. Okay? The aromatic ring remains the same. All right? Um, <clears throat> but what change would be the side chain? And that helps in terms of the development of aspirin. That gives the responses what we're looking for in analgesic and also antiparatic. Is 1940s, you know, they only have corticosteroid, which is steroidal, and they are, they have a lot of side effects. Yeah, those are being used before as anti-inflammatory. The only one. Yeah, you have whenever you actually look at a drug, you have to see what actually happened to what people have earlier. Yeah. So if this is a reference, yeah. Um, they need something which is easily easier to synthesize, safe, okay, and also you need something that is already taken, already active, okay. Um, <clears throat> so what can they do next? So they use aspirin as a lead molecule. So they have this hypothesis, okay, um, that is based on the first hypothesis is based on the carboxylic acid. They have tried to change with aspirin. They have actually made derivatives based on the tetazole. They thought that maybe the pH, the pKa, the pKh is actually the, the, uh, the a big factor. Yeah. Um, so they try to use tetazoles. They try to use phenol to change it and sulfonamide and so on and so forth. But they still couldn't get the same effect. They couldn't get the anti-inflammatory effect, the anesthetic effect as well. That's what happened. So they have to go back to the carboxylic acid as the first hypothesis. You see later as well. Yeah? And the second hypothesis is that, so now they have one functional group already, the carboxylic acid. What is the R group? Yeah. So they look at the arachidonic acid, the substrate for this inflammation to, to cause causes, uh, the PG um, prosagandin precursor. Yeah. So what is the R group? So they went actually look at the R group they found that it's actually a long chain yeah, with alkene. There's one, two, three, four alkenes there. Yeah? And they found that if you actually have it, cut it short, two carbon or three carbon, what happens is that the, uh, having, you have this carboxylic acid there already, but you cut it short to two carbon, three carbon, like an acetic acid, nothing happens. It's really not much of basically lacks um, any energetic property. Yeah? If you extend it, if you have something like an aromatic ring or a hetero, hetero, heterocycle, yeah? alkyl chain doesn't work as well. You have to change it to aromatic ring or a heterocycle because they, they want this interaction. Yeah? The alkene that, alkene that is very important. For interaction. So what mimics the alkene interaction, the pi pi bond, is an aromatic ring. Okay? So, and it seems that it correlates with alkene position at a 5 and 8 position. If they can make it bigger, it doesn't work as well. If the ring is bigger, it doesn't work. Yeah? So usually, if you see the rest of other um, NSAIDs, they are usually the, a single atom arom aromatic ring. Like, like the uh, area of the acid, you know, area acid and so on. Yeah, you should like that. Okay. Um, and another thing that they have found, the scientists have found is that they are also non-planar. Usually the ring, if you have another ring there, it would be nice to have a non-planar ring. This is uh, exemplified by methanobic acid, by Ponstan. I'll show you in a bit as well. Okay. Uh, it might be because it actually corresponds to this this 8-11 alkene. So they need that carboxylic acid as a first hypothesis. They need for interaction, eh? strong interaction, good interaction, to give the energetic property. They need that pi-pi bond interaction. Okay? So that what gives a pi-pi bond interaction is the aromatic ring. 